Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video and um, for a change you've got a bow Dan. Yes. What's what's going on and well, why, why have you got a bow on a channel called Richard Head Longbows? I thought we'd talk about bows today wow. rather than these rather obscure things that we've been The crazy doing. videos that yeah. people like. <laughs> That's the ones. This is going to be a really boring, <laughs> boring one. A boring bows. longbow oh, video. Oh god go on then what this is it? This I made in 1997. Wow. In those days, still using hickory, so hickory on the back, uh, purple heart in the core, lemon wool belly, horn knocks, a long bow. But this is slightly different. If we unbrace it, it, it looks like a normal bow to me. It actually comes apart. Wow. And it's a carriage bow. Aha. Uh -huh. Called a carriage bow because in Victorian times, when the gentry, who were the main people involved in archery, went to a shoot in their carriage Ooh. a six foot plus long bow difficult to fit in i say driver driver uh, could you put my bags on board please uh no sorry ma'am your bags will fit but that long bow is gonna have to stay <laughs> oh and why is that well it's not gonna fit in the carriage is it oh oh dear what will i do you will have to avail yourself of one of the newfangled carriage bows what I have heard so much about in the morning papers, ma'am. Oh. Oh dear. Uh, oh. I don't know. Women doing sport. Whatever next. Cool. Whereas this, you can fold it up, put it in your carriage. Fine. Go to the chute. Very nice. Assemble it. Slot it back together. You've got a complete bow. Wow. How does it work, this miracle? You've got a metal sleeve, and I have uh -huh. the makings of Ooh, one here. So is? hold that. Uh. And... So you've got a metal, oh, metal sleeve, which is the handle part. You fit one of those smaller pieces to the end of the bow. Oh, I see that. Oh, right. So to both ends of the bow. The one at one end I've got permanently glued in. You don't have to do that, but oh, that one's permanently glued in. And the other one just slots, slots in. We've made a small number of these bows over the years. Uh, one for a customer in Japan who wanted one for whatever reason. Uh, another one we made for a chap who was going out to America bow hunting and he was going to be on horseback and he wanted to use the longbow but he didn't want to be carrying it around on the horse, waving in the air, frightening every animal for miles around. Mm. He wanted to actually put it in the holster that a rifle would sit in on the side of the horse oh, wow. so he could slot it in there then when he was ready for the hunt he took it out assembled it and away he went mm. so it's that's a rather obscure use for it um, but it just shows mm. that there are uses yeah uh, so we haven't made many uh, we've still got two or three of these sleeves left Right. which I doubt that we will use so we'll probably put those for sale yeah if you want them they'll be on the web shop uh, Quite simple to use, just our old diet. You need to make sure you've got a good fit on the end of the bow with these short sleeve sections. Mm. Uh, arrow diet one permanently on if you wish. Um, and um, the other fits to the end of the bow so it will slot, slot in and out. Quite, yeah, it's, quite it's, it's not for the faint of heart uh, if you're going to have a go at making one. Uh, I recommend uh, a bit of experience in making bows before perhaps venturing into uh, making I, one I of these. I think so. Uh, there's quite a lot of work involved. Uh, my dad is making it sound easier than it actually is. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult. Um, obviously with the English longbow, it does have a technically a riser section in the sense that the handle tends not to move, uh, although you can't eliminate all movement, so you will get some movement in here which I know when we were making them we had some difficulties um, in, uh, in reducing the movement and you you can get some cracking of the glue if you don't get it right and you don't get that fit yeah. correctly but once the strings on the um, whole thing's held, held yeah together it, it, the, anyway. the tension of it does keep it yeah. all together but yeah. Uh, yeah it's not not as easy as it sounds so uh, yeah don't buy one on your your first attempt at making a bow <laughs> is perhaps not not the best idea uh, but yeah certainly a fantastic way of making a short bow uh, especially if you uh, still drive around in a carriage uh, or on a horse. I'm sure, some people uh, do. Maybe, well, with, maybe with they the do. petrol and diesel going out of popularity, yeah. it's going to be horse and cars mm, if you yes. haven't got an electric vehicle. Yeah, I can see that happening. Uh, or the zombie apocalypse. 
of course uh, renders all transport impossible uh, you may need that to keep the zombies away uh, if you're living in a small dugout somewhere where room is at a minimum and you haven't got high ceilings or maybe you're a hobbit and uh, you you maybe need a bow like that. Is this getting a bit dark? We might we might now be veering off being about longbows <laughs> into being one of the weird videos, and for that I do apologise. I think we'd better call this to uh, a halt. Yeah, OK, fair enough. Uh, well, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, and if you are feeling brave and you fancy having a go, then, uh, yeah, we're going to put the last, <laughs> last of our stock of these <laughs> on the web shop uh, for you brave people out there to have a go at making your own hobbit bow, I mean, carriage bow. Good. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>